Yeah, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to our first information section for CDUIT Code Fair 2022. Uh, nice to meet you all today and congratulations for some of you as new, new student in CDU uh, for 2022. And I'm very excited to be here and honored to be here today. My name is Rosie. So I am one of ambassador for CDU IT Code Fair 2021 and for 2022 as well. So uh, first of all, I would like to thank you so much everyone for making the time joining with us today. And before we go any further, I would like to acknowledge the traditional custodian of the land where we are meeting and pay respect to elder, both past and present, and extend that respect to all Aboriginal, Torres Strait Islander people. We have the, I just go overview about the content of the information section today. So we have four main parts. The first one is the information section for CDU IT Code Fair 2022, which is from 1 to 130. And after that, we have the time management skill, uh, which is presented by Dr. Cherry. And after the time management skill, we have the afternoon tea from 2.30 to 2.45. And um, after afternoon tea, we have the networking skill, which is uh, delivered by Miss Mita and Miss Lee from Career Center. And after a networking skill for one hour, we have 15 minutes for doing by practice within the participant today. So. Before we start information section, I would like to ask everyone here two questions. So I will need to volunteer to answer these two questions. So the first one is what do you want to gain from this workshop? Because I believe that um, whenever you join any workshop, you definitely have some purpose in your mind, right? So it's really important for you to know what you want to gain from this workshop and why you are here. And I really want to see any Oh, cool. Yeah, could you just stand up a bit and then introduce yourself to everyone joining today? Hey guys, my name is Osh, and uh, uh, the reason that I'm here is because I want to gain insight about what's in the IT code fair and how it is impacting an IT student's uh, you know, career and kind of uh, his, uh, his all skills and how it is impacting and how it is motivating the student to work hard. So I'm uh, pretty uh, excited about doing all these things. That's very really nice. Thank you. Anybody else? Hi everyone, I'm Tracy. Um, I have, uh, yeah, when it comes to the workshop today, I want to know how, like, how should I prepare for uh, IT Code Fair because I'm really going to join it. Yeah, cool. Is there anybody want to say as well? Is one, anyone want to say, like, okay, cool. So, the second question Have you ever heard any information about City IT Code Fair? Anyone know about that? Could you say with us? Can I introduce you, invite you? Yeah. Hi, I'm Sanjana. Yes, yeah. I have heard about it. Like, uh, whenever I have spoken with my senior, yeah. you know, the students who have been there, one to go is like, if you are in IT, you should always you know, participate in CDO IT. Yeah. Just be present there because yeah. it's a very good opportunity to get network and you know, know people from the firm. Mm -hmm. So yeah, for many people, actually being a uh, you know and a gate to more opportunities. So yeah, I'm totally looking forward. That's really cool. <laughs> Is there anyone um, I would want to say as well? Like, have you heard any information like from senior or other student about CDU IT Code Fair? I just really want to know because it's going to really uh, like important for like some people that they have like try to fight by yourself because sometimes in uni like not everything that you're going to bring to you you need to be the person who really active to know the information by themselves by yourself but don't worry that's the reason we are here today that's the reason we have the first information section really early this year 2022 because we really want to get the attention from students like at first step to joining the uh, information section to know about the city uit code fair and prepare really well for that okay cool thank you so much for joining as volunteers so I would like to give you the really brief idea what is CDU IT Code Fair. So CDU IT Code Fair was filed in 2014 until now. So we are continually organizing the CDU IT Code Fair every year for eight years already. And this is one of the biggest events for IT students in CDU, especially for the uh, technology information discipline. And this event in, include all 
of the our lecturer IT uh, companies and also around like 300 IT students and the number of students increase every year on 2014 is around six I guess like six projects but until 2021 we have around 150 projects from all the IT students so this is a really big event for everyone especially for IT students and this event our event include a lot of competition and challenges for all the IT students so if you are uh, if you are really good at uh, coding you can join coding competition or like we also have data science like we have cyber security as well so we have a lot of competition and challenges during the CDU IT code fair week and in this event you have chance to show your skill IT skill for in front of the all the uh, potential employer in the future and this one also you can like solve the real problem it's not just in like you know in subject in notebook or but you, you have chance to solve the real problem around you. So this is a really good chance for you to solve the innovation and your creativity. And especially for the person that uh, graduation or even you are prepared to start study, it's really good job, good chance to get the job offer or get the internship after the event. So this is just a brief idea about the what CDU IT Code Fair. And the CDU IT Code Fair also sponsor of the many, many com company, IT company in Darwin, especially from anti-government and DCDC is the one of the big de department about IT in, uh, in Darwin. And I would like to give you some facts about the CDU IT Code Fair 2021. So for the CDU IT Code Fair 2021, we have around like 150 entrants, 150 projects that both individual and group joining the CDU IT Code Fair. And we also have around 27 company like sponsor our event. Uh, we have around like 30 professional IT professional joining as the judge. And also we have around 300 people attend the event. Both include the uh, our, our lecturer or the IT uh, professional and also student. And for the um, competition, we have around like 150. So in, in 150, we have around 33% that student joining COTI uh, competition and around 21 joining uh, the research competition. So it's just the overall idea about the CDU IT Code Fair like in 2021. And about the what happened in CDU IT Code Fair week, uh, what competition we have and all the activity, I would like to introduce um, Mr. Kenny, one of our uh, ambassador as well. So he's gonna talk with you in more detail about what's gonna happen in the IT Code Fair week. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Rosis, for uh, introducing a little bit about CDU at the last year. So, um, from my side, uh, my name is Kenny. I'm still am student ambassador in last year and in this year as well, 2022. So today, I, today I would like to share with you all about uh, what happened in CDU Code Fair Week. Uh, it's going to be held in uh, in uh, the end of this year. So, and then I say, why you should join at the Code Fair? Yeah, and how to prepare for now for CU Code Fair as the CU student. So the first thing is speed dating preparation workshop. So what's that in the IT Code Fair week? It's the uh, events for have you to prepare from interview with the employers for many local IT companies uh, and anti government as well. So it's opportunity for you to uh, join to, and show your knowledge and skill. Uh, to uh, before the employer to get the internship and professional job as well. So um, it's very interesting, right? And the next competition and challenge, I would like to share with you that uh, for all the competition and challenge here, most of the events, most of the challenge is for CDU students. Uh, visit innovation, data science, coding, cybersecurity, research and poster. Uh, only IT innovation challenge and digital territory challenge is for high school and external student. It is not a city youth student. So uh, maybe you can uh, uh, focus on all the competition here. Yep, I will uh, share with you in detail in the next slide. Uh, one more information is uh, this is uh, what I will share with all of you is for reference from last year. 
uh, all information for this year events we will be uh, share in the next upcoming uh, reference uh, information workshop. Yep. Uh, this is uh, business innovation challenge uh, in last year. Yeah, this year all the requirement will be developed by NT government, and you will have the chance to showcase your uh, team innovation to solve your pro the problem, real problem, uh, within the NT states. And the next data science challenge. This challenge offer you to showcase your data science and uh, skill to the industry, and it's going to work in the team. So you will uh, have opportunity to pre present before the judges and in the challenge date. Yep. And the next cyber security uh, is uh, the security challenge to show on the real case of cyber security in the lab room. And the next, the coding competition, what is it? This competition is a wide range of categories uh, from beginner to advanced level. So you can include your past project uh, from pre previous unit and from your own free time uh, as a team or your individuals. For poster competition, this uh, competition is to showcase your ideas by a poster. Yep. Uh, to the judges or the judges. The next is the resource competition. The candidates will have to conduct a resource on a particular topic uh, and will be evaluated by the judges. Only the top quality uh, resource will be selected uh, to present in the main event date. OK, uh, the next I would like to share with you is the activities in IT Code Fair Days. And we have uh, some activities very interesting. The first is employee speed dating session for graduating students and recent graduates within the IT industry, but very limited space available. And for the next IT workshop for middle school students as well and senior college students. And the, the most important thing is, I think, the networking opportunity for uh, all of you to join with local IT companies. And you know, you uh, many students get the own of the many students. Most of the case, you get a call or email to get a job offer uh, after this event day. OK, so why you should join the IT Code Fair in this year? So it will help you to show your talent in for future employers. Or to improve your heart and soft skill. Build the connections with your friends and future employers. Get into seat and the job um, after the event. And the winner from each category will be nominated uh, to have the award by the Minister of Corporate and Digital Development at the Parliament House in the next day after the event day. So uh, you're going to have a lot of fun uh, to join the ID Code Fair in this year. Yep. So how to prepare for CU at the Code Fair in this year, 2022? So the first thing, you try to start your project as soon as possible, uh, maybe from now, and start thinking about how you can incorporate creativities and innovation in your project. Uh, maybe the website or applications developed in different units uh, during the semester. And Join your workshop and develop your soft skills such as time management, networking, presentation skill to sorry to develop your skill and to build the connections with many many employers. So uh, please connect with us. Uh, see you at the Code Fair uh, the, because the most updated information will be released and uh, published on our social media channel. Please follow and connect us via the Facebook. LinkedIn and Instagram as well. So if you have any question, please uh, put your question here in uh, our Facebook or another social channel and we will uh, leave your queries. We will back to you as soon as possible. Yep. so uh, thank you for listening uh, my past. The next, the next is the presentation by Mr. Pijus uh, from IDSA. Thank you and welcome, Pizus.
Thank you, Kenny. And now continuing the keep in touch part. Also, uh, the social medias are one part of it, and also I would recommend all of you guys to please attend the events organized by the IT Students Association. I'm addressing you uh, all as, as a board member of the IT Students Association. I've been involved with this club for the past year in 2021, and I'm also doing it this year. And anyone here interested is welcome. Last year, we organized a few events on employability and career development, like panel discussions and networking conclaves, et cetera. And we are, we're also recognized as one of the service sponsors for Code Fair 2021. And this year, we have more plans of integrating CDU ITSA more with uh, Code Fair and working and building everything up from promotions to networks to make the big, the, the big game happen, which is uh, Code Fair. So please attend the events organized by CDU ITSA too, and which will keep you, which will keep happening frequently. We'll try our best to to do like one event every month, and our events will keep you posted about ID Code Fair as well. And now I'll be moving into an interesting topic. The Intersystems Internship. So Intersystems, it's a multinational company based out of America, and the core product is a data platform called Iris. And the other prominent pro product is electronic medical record system called TrackCare. Talking about the company, it is based out of America, and it's, it has offices in 25 countries. And they, are also, they also came to Darwin in 2017. And uh, it's, it's a really, really big company. And what they are doing up here in Durban is they have a big, like, anti health in collaboration with the Department of Corporate and Digital Development. They have a really big project worth $259 million called CCSRP, Core Clinical Systems Renewal Program, which is basically the biggest IT reform here in, here in the NT. And Intersystems is a software vendor for this project. And in and in the systems, every year they have this summer internship program, which usually starts after the end of semester two, around November or December, and ends around February and March, where they hire interns regardless of their experience and qualifications, and train them in their in their technologies. They hire a cohort of interns every year, and they will they will train them in their proprietary technologies. And this internship program, it started in 2017 with two interns and gradually it moved to three, four, and this year it was five. And fortunately, I was one of them. I was one of the five. And I'll be sharing my experience and how, I, how the internship is and how I cracked it and what the benefits of it are and everything else. So as I said, they hired, as I said, in the systems, they hire interns regardless of their experience and qualifications. So anyone is welcome to apply for it. If you are studying, if you are enrolled into a computing degree in, in CD or anywhere else, you will qualify for it. And when you apply, you'll have to pass a personality, not really pass, but sit for a personality index test, which will basically pin, paint a picture about what your personality is like and in what circumstances you can perform, perform the best. And the other one is a maths test. It's a, it's a logic test where you'll have to attend like 20 questions. Uh, it's basically like the word problems we used to do back in our school school days in mathematics and the other and, and the other test is a a programming like a coding test where you'll have to learn a programming language in real time which is in the systems has their own proprietary language called object script and you'll have to real the and you'll have to learn the programming language in real time and answer questions and the and both the tests are out of 20 and if you score more than 17 which is the best which is uh, when they consider you for other round of interviews and all that so if you perform good in the in those two tests, you'll have you'll you'll then move into other rounds of interviews. There will be a one round of interview in Code Fair, which will be taken by Darwin office staffs. And then if you qualify in that interview, then you'll be interviewed by the big bosses in Sydney. Where we and, and that interview will decide whether you'll get hired or not. If you perform good in that interview, congratulations, you're hired. And then you'll be placed in, in Darwin office for a certain period of time, which was in my case, it was only eight weeks because our semester finish, finished pretty late. But it usually is uh, 12 weeks, three months. And where and during the internship, you'll work on a real world project where you will be like building real stuff uh, using intersystems 
technologies. And last year's interns, they, de they developed one product called TrackPass, which was really promising that it was commercially rolled out in Scotland in hospitals. There are two benefits of this internship program. The first one is the opportunity itself, like having a multinational company up here in Darwin is really rare. There are only three, three multinational companies in IT. NEC, DXC technology, and other one is inter-system. So just the opportunity itself is really big. It's a portal. It's, it's a portal to the global corporate world, you know. And it's a paid internship, by the way. And this will be really good on your resume. And uh, and the other benefit is inter-systems uh, technologies are all proprietary, so we won't be able to learn it. From from the internet, like there are no not much resources, and the developers community is not that active. So you learn about inter systems only when you work with them. So that's another benefit of it. I wouldn't say inter systems products are mainstream. Like the data platform Iris is not it is not as mainstream as MySQL or MongoDB, and the programming language Object Script it is not as big as JavaScript and Python. But they have a really good, a really big customer base. There are many corporations that are like really big customers of inter systems. So you'll get to learn learn the technology that you, you won't be able to learn anywhere else. And uh, the opportunities thereafter, as I said, the inter systems, they came here for this project called CCSRP. So after you finish the internship, there are, fa there are fairly good chances of getting hired in that project uh, and working under DCDD, the Department of Corporate and Digital Development. For the past two years, like whoever has been part of the internship program, one of one of them is working with inter systems, and all the all the all the rest of the interns they are working with CCSRB. So even like viewing it from the perspective of opportunities after the internship, it's a it's not something to miss. You wouldn't want to miss this. And and talking about my my experience. I was lucky enough that they offered me a permanent role right after the internship. So it is uh, so as an opportunity, it is really good. So apparently, coming down to the gist of all this, it's a like you know, regardless of the of, of your experience, whether you you just have to be enrolled in an IT degree, and even if you don't have any experience, you'll just have to pass the tests. And when you perform well in the interview. <coughs> You'll get an opportunity to work for a multinational company based out of America here in Darwin, in a city like Darwin. And it's a paid internship on top of that. And you'll be building really good connections, making a pathway for yourself for getting into the for getting into other employments, other permanent employments after after the internship. And it'll be really good on your resume. And this year the internship program will be even bigger. As seen there, the one visa is five interns or so. It might be even bigger, so I would like to invite Tian to talk about this year's internship. Thank you very much. So, uh, as Deyush also already talked about some of the opportunities of internships, I just want to add some more. So, it is the summer intern, and it has 10 positions this year. And last year, we just have five positions, and three out of five, they have full-time positions at the moment. So, and to, this year we increase into 10 positions and we don't know, maybe next year we don't have any more chains like this. So please grab the chance at the moment and start to prepare yourself. Maybe you can grab some tips from Piyush that how to prepare online tests and interview because the duration from now until early December, that would be recruitment process. So that would be online test and interview. And this one is the full-time position. And if we start in December, it hasn't started anything until December. So you don't need to afraid how to handle a full-time internship with the study at the same time. Uh, and this is, as you can see, this is the inter-system email address, so if you have any further information related to the role, so please send inquiry to them, or you can express interest of their position as well. And um, as you can see, like the online test, 
and also interview will occur during 4 to 7 October this year. So right now, I think it's better that you can start to build up your resume and like uh, gain some feedback from PUs and stuff because online test is not 100% about technical skills. It's also about how your thinking, logical thinking, and also behavioral questions as well. Um, and because this year in the systems um, want to have 10 positions and next year because we, we don't know yet like is it any more positions uh, more than 10 positions or something that's not so please don't miss this opportunity and Piyush is now working like part-time position in the system as well. So it means that you can have high chance if you are already graduates, so you can get the full-time position. Otherwise, you can transfer into the part-time jobs. And we also have another opportunity for you as well. So we are recruiting ambassadors at the moment as well. Um, so, so please have a look on those flyers. Uh, for the job description and requirements. This one is not only for IT students, anyone in CBU students can apply for the position if you're interested in. And please send your resume to our email address, that is IT Corporate also mentioned in the flyer as well. And if you have any questions, please send the inquiry our social media page. So we always be there to help you as well as or if you have any questions related to in the system, you can email to us as well through the email in the flyer. Yeah. And Jerry, do you want to add anything more for the session? Yes, I, think I just would like. Hi, everyone. My name is Cherry, and I am one of the lecturers in IT. Yes, yeah, very nice to see you. And then I think that I've seen, I've heard a few names coming up. Like I think I've seen Showcat on the online teams, and I've seen Tracy online on Tuesday. Yes, yeah, so it's great to map the person's face to the name. Yeah. Um. Unfortunately, with COVID and all of these things and it limits us in really having a lot of healthy conversations like this. So um, I would like just to ask Piyush to share with you what project that he worked on during his in the system internship, which in that system they really actually implemented right now in hospitals. Like it's how it actually bring the impact to the doctors and how the doctors can use those data to help really patients. Yeah, so just share with us a little bit. So the project, what uh, we did, uh, what, what me and my team did was, uh, it was basically a native application on your phone. It was built for nurses, which uh, would let them scan a QR code on patient's wrist, on, uh, on a patient's wrist. And scanning the QR code, it would bring up a screen for observations entry of the patient. And when the nurses, they make measurements on the patient, like their blood sugar level and their uh, height and weight anything like this and they would be and they would and the app would like show up a screen for them to enter the information and when the info, when the information is entered and it's sent back to the database which in case this was uh, a data platform called iris which is in the system's very own data platform technology and when and when the data is entered in the into the mobile application and it is sent it would go back to Track care. Sorry, it it would go back to Iris, which in turn, Iris Iris would update that that data in Track Care, which is a electronic medical records management system. So we we developed this application part of it and worked a bit on the back end, and I got to experiment with REST APIs and uh, their other technology called Innovation Toolkit, which was just released last year, and we were one of the we were perhaps the first first people to experiment with it. And and the application it was built on React Native. So uh, let's see how that how that will go. We've like we've developed it and we've submitted it to the company, and let's see how what they will be doing with it. 
Uh, I could have shown it on my phone, but after I finished the internship, for you know confidentiality reasons, I had to delete the video and the application from my phone. So that was about the project. And I would like to add one more thing. I also applied for this internship program in 2020. While I was like a first year student, I just came to Darwin and it was my first year, first year of study uh, in Australia, basically. And I didn't have, it was only my first day and there were other people who were definitely better than me, who, who did really good job. So I applied for the first year. I passed the tests. I had a really good score. That's what I heard. Um, but I didn't maybe, and the interview was decent as well, but I didn't really get it for the first year. And I learned, what I learned from the, that first experience was, they were asking in the interview, like, what projects you have done? Can you program? What, what have you really built? Till now, like your part doesn't have to be a real world corporate experience or in a workplace. But what have you really done with your with your spare time? Like what have you built? What uh, what systems have you developed? That's what you'll ask. That's what you'll be asked. And I didn't really have much to say back then in my first year, but in my second year of study, I had worked on a lot of projects, including my assignments. Uh, that also counts. Like, I had learned a fair bit of programming languages after I started uni which I had not done before. And I was also, uh, I had also presented like two projects in Code Fair. I was, uh, me and my team, we were winner of the Business Innovation Challenge, which Kenny talked about. So I had a lot to say because of one year of experience of working and doing projects, I had, I had stuff to say. You know, I had knowledge and I had stuff to say, like what, what I've done till now. So I think that part was really important. I also had a few, I uh, had, ex had experience with, machine learning and all that. So in the interview, I think I did really well. So what like the gist of what I'm trying to say is in the first first take, I didn't get it. But in second second time, I did. So what I learned from the first first time was you'll need to have some you'll need to have done something for you to confident confidently tell tell them that you're capable of this. So test score are one thing. They are one of the things that's 50 for 50 percent of the of the recruitment process and the other part is performing well in the interview this would be believe this this would believe like this would trust you that you can really do something when they hire you make them believe at least thank you very much that was my experience yeah thank you so much Richard. i believe that Richard is the person that you can come with him later on for afternoon tea to ask more detail because it's going to be the long journey for him as well to prepare for that. Like it, it took actually around two or three months for him to do the test, to prepare for the interview. And it's also the connection, like seeing his, his start, like he do the assignment, he do the unit, like he tried to done something before he, he had the interview. And that's the most important, I believe, that he choose him not the first time but the second time so this is really important for you as the new student like try to prepare as much as you can because now it's just on march you still have like nine months to prepare on, on and the, until the event on december so try your best to like when you study build something in your unit your assignment and have something to say with the interview in in the interview so it's a really good help for you to get this internship uh, thank you pictures for that and we would like to just open the really quick video for you about the information section last year i'm uh, sorry for the um, introduce for video last year Welcome to the 8th CDU IT Code Fair, an annual event bringing together local industry, government, schools, and university staff to promote the growth of ICT in the Northern Territory. This is a unique opportunity for CDU students to showcase their talents, network with potential employers, and use their creativity and IT skills to solve real-world business problems. CDU IT Code Fair also promotes the benefits of IT education and training for middle schools and senior college students, fostering relationships between students, industry, local government, and community. This event is one of a kind in the NT. The first 
first court fair was run in 2014, which was 18 higher education students, and has since grown to become the largest event organized by CDU Information Technology Business. In 2020, we hosted more than 150 participants from that and higher education, with 16 industry sponsors, 35 judges, and 19 industry participants in the employers' speed dating from 29 organizations across the territory. This year, around 185 students will take part in various competitions and challenges designed to showcase their working applications, present their research, and demonstrate their innovative communication skills. The Business Innovation Challenge gives students a unique opportunity to solve real-life problems with innovative IT solutions. Students took part in designing the Citizens Portal, the authentic project hosted by the Department of Corporate and Digital Development to facilitate communication between government and NT residents. Other previous winners in Business Innovation Challenge include NT Bus Tracker and MyFuel NT. CEO IT Court Fair is also an excellent opportunity for employers to source graduate IT staff. With many of our students receiving internships or offers of employment, thanks to our employers speed dating sessions. CDU IT Code Fair is also recognized in National University Teaching Awards organized by Universities Australia as part of the Citation Award for Outstanding Contribution to Student Learning. Finally, four of our top entrants will be recognized for their achievements at the Northern Territory for Digital Excellence, taking place at the Parliament House tomorrow night. On behalf of the organizing committee, we'd like to thank you all for attending CDU IT Code Fair 2021, and we wish our participants the best of luck. Uh, so next is Q&A session. Uh, if you have any questions, please uh, raise your hand and let us know. We will uh, get back to you immediately. Does anyone have any question for the, the information session today? Don't be shy. If you have any question, whatever question, even not related to the city IT code if we have chance to answer, we also want to answer. Otherwise, uh, you definitely can contact with us online, on Facebook, LinkedIn, or Instagram. We are here to help because we really believe that whenever you start early, it's really helped you a lot later on. So we that's the reason why we really want to make this one early this year in week two. So let everyone know about that and whichever you need that you involve in this year, you definitely can relate to the project that you want to uh, submit for the CDU IT Code Fair. And if you have any question regarding to the CDU IT Code Fair, regarding to the internship, we can connect with Figures or another person that already successful to get the internship and get the job after the CDU IT Code Fair. Please just contact us. We are here to help. We are here to to grow together. And, and I believe in you as well. As the new student, you can do whatever you can. And as long as we prepare for that, so uh, I really hope that you enjoy the information section today, and I hope that you get the the, the purpose that you come today to get briefly, just briefly about CDI IT Code Fair. And for the next section, uh, I really uh, would like to introduce Dr. Cherry to say with her about the time management skill, which is really important for for students, how to manage the time really well, like study and also do the volunteer job or part time job. A lot of hat, right? So, Dr. Cherry would like to share with you how to manage everything. Could you uh, do my just give a round of applause for her? Thank you. Okay, hi everyone. Um, last year and previous year, usually we started information sessions in semester two. And then the students said, like, oh, why? I think we don't have enough time to prepare all this. So, that's why we started early in the semester one. And now you would have no excuse. They're like, I'm gonna have enough time. We've got we got the alumni from behind, so they are usually like the one like. Time. Yes. Uh, um, here, before we start, I would just would like to show you a video. 
I don't know if you have watched this before. Let me just. what big task can you put first right so it's not about you have to fit in everything and then not possible to fit in what we have to do really is to see what is the most important thing for what was the most uh, the most important thing for charlie is it big rock yes important clients exercise family maybe yes so in your life can you just give me an example of what are your big rocks is it your part-time job? Study. Study? Oh, I'm gonna remember. <laughs> yes. Oh. I hope I hope this this one go in there as well. <laughs> so that that has to be one of the big rocks, yeah. Family, yes, that's very good. Jobs. Okay. Jobs, okay. Jobs, this depends. Uh, with the jobs, I would have to say that it depends. Let's say you have to balance like between the job. Which one would work more, right? Yeah. Right, depends. Mm. Yeah, health. I love that. That is great. Yeah, so you can see that the, when you're looking at your big rocks, it's not really that many. Okay, um, you have 24 hours a day. How do you actually manage your 24 hours usually? How many percent sleeping? <laughs> I would see some students, they say like they sleep three hours a day. I'm like, no, don't do that. This is very bad for your body. Yeah? How long do you sleep? Seven hours. Seven hours. That's good. Yeah, six to eight hours. This is really good. Okay. So you need to balance. How many people exercise? Yay! I think I've seen three hands. <laughs> so this is a problem with IT people. Because what do we do? <laughs> right and then i see a lot of people started to like you know you don't get oil like starting from like this right so we don't want to see that get up from your desktop computer whatever you're working on stretch right <laughs> stretch out get a good posture because when you go for job interview like that who's gonna hire you <laughs> like grumpy and all that so so that's not a good idea Think about health, like you said, court fair, family, study, and jobs. Okay, now we have what we call as Eisenhower principles. Okay, so Eisenhower principles said there are two kinds of problems. What are the problems? They said the urgent problem and the important. Okay, so the urgent are not important, but the important are never urgent. 
Is that confusing? Do you agree or do you don't agree? Urgent and not important. And the important and never urgent. I would say that it really depends, right? So what you have to see is really be effective as well as efficient. Who is spending time effectively? Are you guys spending time effectively? Do you feel just your own perception? How many times do you check your phone for Facebook a day? How long do you spend on Facebook? And then actually, if you wanted to just look in at email, then oh, pop in someone chat and then you continue to carry on. This happens all the time. Oh, I have to check on my game. Maybe I have to check my Pokemon. How many times do I have to check on like uh, my Roblox, Minecraft, whatsoever, right? So these are the things that is not important, but you feel it's urgent because if I don't, don't do it now, what happens? Then you will lose score or you lose that credit for it whatsoever. So I like you to think about urgent and important. Ah. Okay, what are the important activities? I hope it's like class. I will stop writing that because it's not creating that mark. Class? What are your important activities? Okay, good. What else are important activities? Remove the boat here. I think the online can see the boat oh. easier. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, anyone? Thank you, sir. After yeah. that, it can yeah. move for you. Yeah. Thank you. Some assignments, class, important activities. Mm -hmm. Maintaining family. Mm -hmm. Maintaining family. Yes, maintaining family. Okay, so here are a few of important activities, right? What about urgent activities? What do we mean by urgent activities? So we say this is important. And this one we need urgent. Going to bathroom. <laughs> yeah. Right, telephone call. That's urgent. Right? What else are urgent? Sometimes there are unexpected things that you got called that can be urgent as well. Let's say um, your friend says that, oh, my car tie is flat. I need help. That's urgent, right? So we have a lot of urgent and important activities. Now, I would like you to think about how we can put them into metrics. Okay, so how does that mat metric work? How would that matrix work would be for quadrant urgent and not urgent okay important and not important so when we're looking at important and urgent so these are things with clear deadlines and consequences for not taking immediate action so early on in the semester you've got all assessment lineup okay I want you to start putting that in into different weeks that you have to finish them, okay? Because if you don't do it as urgent and important, you might end up to become a lot of hectics at the end of the day. Okay, um, I just want to just quickly go through before we go on to the explanation. What do you feel like in your 24 hours yesterday, what are the things that happen go through the most? Urgent, important, not urgent, important. Which one do you spend the most? Not urgent, not important. Not, not urgent, not important. Really? Yeah, yeah, the most of it. Okay. For myself, sometimes I feel that I ended up here, urgent and important. And that's not good because if 
a lot of them go on like this. What happened? Stress, gray hair, <laughs> eyes, oh. like you don't get that. The, you've got wrinkled skin and so on. So where should you push all your tasks to? Scheduling. Oh, okay. So yes, that's right. Scheduling. Not urgent, but important. Spend your time every day. Spend most of the time for something important and not urgent. I don't mean that. Oh, it's important. I have time, and you know, I just start uh, before that. And let's relax. I mean, you, I'm not. I'm not telling you to take your time and not do anything. But you have to spend the time on schedule it and do it. Okay. So we say. Um, try not to have too much important and urgent. So because these are things with clear deadlines and we have consequences like punishment if we are not finishing them. However, a lot of times there are things that we don't expect, unexpected things. Sometimes I'm working on important deadlines and then I've got a call from school saying, that, oh, your daughter is sick, please pick her up. Then I have to actually go there and do it first. Right? So, Please spare some time in your day, maybe an hour or so, for these things that could happen, unexpected things to happen. Because if you set up everything minutes by minute, hour by hour, something happened that is unexpected, you can't cope with it. Everything will fall apart, there'll be no effect. Right? So think about this. Now, not urgent, but important. So what are we to do not to push too much into this urgent and important is to plan. Okay, so don't procrastinate. Let's do it tomorrow. Let's have fun today. Oh, you know, come on, it's just week two. <laughs> yeah, so why? I mean, the assignment is due week 12. What do we worry about, right? So, procrastination. Start now. Start now better than, better be late than never, right? So, start doing that early. So, Think about something important but not urgent, and these are usually something to achieve your personal and professional growth. I want to plan for something for court fair. I need to know some. Um, I have to set the target. I'm not telling you because Kenny said we have business innovation challenge, we have data science challenge, cybersecurity challenge, and this competition, that competition. I'm not telling you to apply for everything. Focus strategy. What are you good at? Okay, let's step back a little bit. What are you good at? What is the job role you want to apply for at the end of your student degree? Are you going to go for information systems? Become business analyst? Then maybe this is something you have to aim for. Okay, um, if you want to look at data analytics, I want to become data scientist. Data scientist. This is what you should be focused on. Okay, do something that is focused on something that you are good at. Okay, I'm not saying that you should not work on your weakness, but you have to set your priorities. I would say that most of the time, when have you done SWOT yourself? SWOT, strength, weakness, opportunities, and threats? Yes, so we have the strategies for SWOT analysis. We said S O. Strength opportunities. So we've got something that looks like this, isn't it? We've got something that is strength opportunities and friends. I'm just gonna have you do like S O. Okay. Now W O. S T and W T. This is the strategies that you are going to be taking advantage of yourself and your skill or your situation. Strength opportunity is how can I use my strength to take advantage of the opportunities? What are the opportunities? In NT, we are in shortage for IT skilled workers. What is my strength? I'm going to be using my Business innovation, information system skill to secure a job in business analyst in the NT. So this is about the opportunities. Okay. Now we want to look at 
this is about if you want to take opportunities, but you don't have that skill yet. This is my weakness. So um, in that case, you can work on your weakness in order to take advantage of the opportunities. But I don't recommend that because this is going to take longer time, more effort than this, isn't it? Would you agree? Yeah. Stand friends. How can I use my strengths to avoid friends? Friends, competitors are friends. What can I do? Like because in the future there might be some people that move to Darwin, fighting for you, fighting with you for the job opportunities. How can you avoid that threat? Establish the connection early with the industry where there are any ACS events, an easy event, go and join them. Hi, my name is Wild Blast. Yes. Okay, I'm, I'm looking forward to work with you for whatever projects. Okay, so this is how you can use your strength because you're in Darwin right now. Avoid that friends, right? And then, so one of the things that you want to do for your priority or your big rock now is networking. And we're going to be talking about that in, with Career Center after, um, after the team. Okay, now weakness and threats. How can I avoid my how can I overcome my weakness to avoid threats? This one will take even more effort than this, than this one. So usually I'm telling students not to focus on this as much, but just look at this. Okay, look at this. So look at your strength, something that you are good at. Because most of the time, something you're good at is something that you are passionate about as well. Okay, so when you go to work in the future, it would be something that you like to do. So, if it is not important but urgent, is it something that you can ask somebody else to do it for you? Let's say you are the supervisors, you got your employee. Sometimes as a boss, you don't have to do everything by yourself. A lot of bosses in the real world, they can't really accept the reality. So they say, if I'm not doing it myself, my staff doesn't do as good as I do. But then you end up doing everything and then why are you paying them to do the work, right? And then, so what do you want to do is maybe you might want to focus on something that you're good at and then maybe outsource her people to do something that you're not good at. Maybe that's something that you might want to look at, delegating. Things that need to be done but don't require your specific skills of PC works. So like uploading blog posts, scheduling, responding to some emails or meal preparation. And this one, we try to avoid as much as possible, avoid all costs, not urgent and not important, deleted. How many people who are here that they always say yes? Can you help me with this? Yes. <laughs> I see a lot of people, yeah. they hand up and then yes, yeah, smiling and all that. I know it is, um, I would say, this is something that it, you don't, some people feel obligated. If I said no, my friend will be upset. I would lose friendship. Mm. But I think that it's really important for you to learn when to say no and how to say no as well. Okay, why? You think it's important to say no sometimes? Yes. Yes, because if you if you say yes, you say yes to everything, you might end up not do well as you would do in normal circumstances, isn't it? Yes, you might do you might not do as good as you would do for your friends, and your friends might be even more upset. You said you're gonna do this for me, but you didn't do it well. That means you you don't think that I'm important at the end of the day. So we're in trouble again. <laughs> Right. So to learn to say no, okay, we, we, I'm going to say we say yes to people, but we say no to the task. I'm not saying that you stop being friend with the person, but you say no to that particular task and maintain the friendship. Would that be okay? I'm not saying that now, from now on, I will not help any friends. You help them when you have time, but when you really don't have time, I'm sorry, but I can't make it this time. Right. Yes, so I hope starting from today, reducing social media, watching TV, video games, eating junk food. Okay. Yeah. I'll be like, everyone, some people. <laughs> what does it supposed to mean? Now, not just that though, that 
concept alone would not have been enough because you have to say like in our life, I asked you earlier, we have, what are your big roles? And some of us said family, some of us said job, some of us said student. I would like you to think in terms of different roles in your life. How many roles do you have? What roles are you playing? Definitely when you're in this room, you are a student. And I'm very sure you are someone's daughter, someone's son. Okay. I'm not sure if you are father and mother yet. Maybe you are some of you are husband or some someone's wife. Okay. Um, you might be also different roles like the youth is Jesus president. <laughs> right. So what's the different role? Um, Kenny is an ambassador for Port Fair. Um, Rosie is also the CITE Accept Team student ambassador. So we've got different roles in our life. Okay. So I want you to think about what roles are you playing at the moment? Okay. What roles are you plan to play? This is something about midterm goal. Let's say in the next three years, next five years, what would you want to be? Okay. What roles do you want to play in life? This is your long term goal. At the end of 10 years, what am I going to be? Right? So I want you to put all those hats on. How many roles do you think you can have at the same time, effectively and efficiently? More than one. Yes. How many? How many is ideal? I would say to start from small numbers, then you can increase. You know, like some Elon Musk, <laughs> like uh, Bill Gates. How many roles do they have? They have more than one companies. How do they manage that time? What do they do? How many roles do we do? I would say maximum of six roles um, in normal circumstances. That would be more than that. When it's more than six, that's when you have to learn to say no. Okay. Have to learn to say no. Or I would have to say when you have more than six, an opportunity come in, go back and reevaluate again. Which six would you want to keep? Maybe there are some roles that you already do it that you want to give up and put in new role. But definitely the family should not be an option. <laughs> I want to keep on become a wife then. <laughs> no, 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 that's not, that's not what I mean, okay? <laughs> so think about which role that is less important to you and then move on. Okay, professional roles would be jobs that I think you are in right now. Okay, is a job that you are in right now. It's going to be a permanent job forever, something you will be doing for the next 10 years or something that you are just going to climb up. If you're going to climb up, what is required for you to do? Look at your boss. What is he or she acquired? What are the skills and experiences he or she has? You probably have to have more than that. Good thing in NT, not a lot of people stay in their positions for a long time. I'm originally from Thailand. If we want to step up, we have to almost like wait until that person has their die. Then we can move up. But in that way, I would say that a lot of people in Australia, people change jobs all the time. So it tended to be like, oh, the boss moved on to do another role, oh, that the position that I am ready because I have been waiting and planning for this so I can move up. Right? So this is something for you to start planning. Are you, how many play the role of parent? Mm. Okay, that's a big job. Yeah, how many play the role of spouse? Yeah, okay. Child, everyone, everyone, yes, yeah, would be, I hope, friend. I hope, I hope that. Did you include yourself when you think about role? Did you include yourself? Me time, my personal me time. Okay, what do you do in your me time? Please don't say daydreaming. <laughs> <laughs> what do you do in your me time? Do you want to maybe maybe grooming, haircut, isn't it? Like uh, do some clothes shopping or job interview, 
swimming, exercise. This is my personal me time that is healthy. Okay, so don't ever forget about yourself. So I would like to include yourself in that four roles as well. So then you, after yourself, you've got three additional roles that you'd like. Okay. Now, I want you to step back a little bit. Think about your strengths. Can you maybe list down your strengths? I'm just going to give you like, let's say three minutes to swap yourself. Why are we doing this? Because we want to improve your self-awareness. Okay, focus your attention to see what you want to do. Now, I'm just going to set the timer right now. Okay, set the timer for three minutes. Three minutes, starting now. Okay, what's fun? Be the next one. Okay. But after, after this one, after the next slide. Okay, you have 10 seconds left. Okay, that's it. Now, after you set out your strengths, I want you to set some SMART goals for yourself. Okay. What do we mean about SMART goals? Specific? Something that I can really know what I have to do, exactly. Okay, measurable, is it quantifiable? Okay, achievable, not too much. Like I'm gonna gain a million dollars, something that is possible, relevant. Why is that important to me? Timely, okay. I'm just gonna give an example. So for example, by the end of this semester, I would like to be able to use my body language more effectively during presentation. Okay, so that's a sort of like specific because I'm not talking about any language, but my body language. A lot of people when they're presenting, they might be like, oh, I don't know when, what do I do with my hands? I am into the do do, so do the do, 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 do
Um, some people might use it too much, some people might use it too little, so it depends, okay? So I want you to think about what is your current level? What is your target level by the end of the semester? And how would you know that you have achieved them? Okay, so I want you to think about your four rows. Okay, four rows maximum. Okay, maybe you can start with that one row. Okay, it can be self, it can be a mother, it can be a daughter, it can be a student or an employee. I want you to set three goals. Three smart goals. For next week. Three smart goals for next week. Okay, so um, Rosie and our ambassador is going to go around and pass the handout that you can write it down, the goals that you have to complete. Why do I have, why do I want you to write it down? Because I feel like if you don't write it down, you're not promising yourself. When you put things on paper, it's sort of like official. I put it there, that's my contract. Okay, so once you put it on paper, Okay, so I can give you some examples. Okay, so for myself, I think I'm going to try to walk 30 minutes a day, five days a week. Okay, so that's something that I achievable and smart because I know that if I start from zero to suddenly one hour, that's, I will not be able to do it. Okay. I can try to tell myself like, try to wake up at 6 a.m. every day. Why is that important? Because as a mother, when you wake up one hour earlier, you can do more things. Okay. Um, I want to learn what you think every week. Anything at all can be a new word, can be how to do certain things. As a lecturer, I want to investigate two learning technology tools to improve peer evaluation each semester. Why? Because a lot of my students said, oh, this guy's not doing his work in the group assignment, for example. So I want to investigate what I can do to help. I want to respond to incoming emails within 24 hours on working days. Oh, at the moment, I sometimes I can't achieve that because something come in and then that was, um, that was put on hold. Commit at least 15 minutes a week for each thesis student. So I would have like one on one sessions with them at least 15 minutes a week. As a mother, I want to spend at least 45 minutes a day on homework together. So that is like a dedicated time, no distractions, no phone on. Because if you're like working on homework with them, oh, the phone ring, that doesn't count as 45 minutes. Read two books together every night before bed. Okay, organize craft materials. All right. Uh, because my house right now is a bit of a mess <laughs> That's the crafting. Then as a daughter, I want to have dinner at the family of at least four nights a week. I say four nights a week because sometimes we've got ACS even we've got the university event. That's not possible. So I want to do four nights a week as a minimum. Be home between 5.30 to 6 p.m. every every day. Yeah, and arrange daily vitamins for mom and dad so that they take that example. So I want you to put this into your own as different roles. Okay, so we will spend, I don't know, like maybe we could do five minutes. Set the timer for five minutes. Five minutes. Counting down. If you need more paper, we've got more. Thank you. 
Just do the first column first, which is the goal. Okay, the first column, which is the goal. Um, if you want to move on to action step, I can let you skip and have a have a bit of a look. I set up some action steps on the next column. So, for example, in my case, like I need to find some time to sort everything into categories. Maybe like the pipe cleaner, paper, color paper, and so on. And then I need to get sometimes maybe go to Kmart and buy the bins. Okay. My, I might have to do some research which one is cheaper or so on, bigger, suitable for my place, and then make labels. So that's my action for the week for one goal. Don't forget assignments for the week and then put them in there as well. <laughs> yeah, so I say assignment one, unit, action step, research on Google Scholar, how many articles. Okay, I think you guys are getting the hang of it. Yeah, so that's great. So I just would like you to go into um, before. Now let's transfer that into the week. Let's put that into context of every day. Where am I going to put that action step into the week time? Okay, and then at the end of tonight, I would like you to, when you're at home, please spend some time to do that planning properly for that four row with that smart goals for all action steps. Okay, then all of those put them into your the best thing is to also look at Outlook. 
you can definitely learn how to do that. Okay. So I want you to put that in the in that Google Calendar or maybe you might use Microsoft Calendar. Put them in at the time. Some people, because you are new to it, I don't need to put in eight to nine days. I don't need to do it. Let's just say morning, afternoon, evening, that's what it is. But before before we go, before we go, I would like to add one more concept. I think this is pretty new concept. And then earlier on, I mentioned about Elon Musk, Bill Gates, and so on. How do these people actually get things done? They use a new concept of time boxing. How many people have heard of time boxing? Yeah, time boxing, time blocking. Some people say time blocking. Some people say time boxing. So um, what we do here is basically we set the timer. Like what we just did, three minutes to do this, five minutes to do that. Of both the time. So that means if I'm going to say I'm going to spend 45 minutes on homework with my daughter, then I'm just going to set that on my timer, that 45 minutes. And then uninterrupted, <laughs> nothing else. Work on that. Until the time set, timer is done, 45 minutes. Ding, ding. That is when you can stop. Okay. Why is that important? Because when you have undivided attention, that's when you're the most, that's when you can achieve most productivity. Okay. So um, I would say that you can use Outlook Calendar. There's also some apps on the phone that you can download for time boxing. Um, when you guys try that, have you guys tried that yet? Yeah. Time boxing app or time blocking. There will be some apps for you to put in. But I would say that for the first time round, because you are new to this, please don't put everything in back to back to back to back. Because you will start to be like, whoa, oh, okay. I'm to do this. Move on. <laughs> so um, I would say that set, um, set aside one day a week first, one day a week, and then don't make it like two back to back. Okay, so give them like half hour break before the next activity because this is quite stressful. So that is the way that you can try to achieve that and then succeed in unboxing. So set aside once a week to try that. Maybe on the day that you're not busy usually, could be a Sunday every week to try that. And see if this is for you because it's not for everyone. Some people might have a life that let's say you deal with little children, you can't really do unboxing because you've got um, interrupted people. Okay, and I would also say that some of the time, the thing that are mostly time wasters usually come from people, other people. Okay, so what can you do in order to screen out some people that usually may be not very destructive, like let's say gossiping, time for gossiping in the workplace? Could I say that we stop gossiping in the workplace? Well, sometimes if so when you're in the workplace, when someone come and share with you her or his own idea, we might still need to have a listen to it. But of course, only if you have time. If you don't have time, I say, oh, you know what? I'm sorry, I've got to go do something. Okay, I've got important task to finish. I've got a deadline to catch. No one will say that. Oh, share something for me. Or well, that, that's it. Okay, so I think that's that's hopefully helpful for you. I hope. Okay, so you would try some of these and see how it goes. If it doesn't work, okay, I'll, the same way I welcome feedback and see what you feel and what you can do to make it better for the future. Okay, so we're gonna take about um, we've got some time now. Yeah. Yeah. So we're gonna take about 20, 15, 20 minutes for a break, bathroom break, and then we've got afternoon tea. Right back, so please welcome. Um, welcome and then start um, networking. After the afternoon tea, we will have a session about networking. We'll do some practice, and after that, we've got pizza. Uh, okay, so we've got for all like, this is vegetarian and cheese. Okay, yeah, so we have uh, so this hang on, yes, yeah, yeah.
the name of it also really important, so I hope that everyone's still inside and yes. enjoy the afternoon tea and I'm not going to enjoy the next one. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. I'm, uh, well, we are really excited and honored to be here to, to have Miss Lee and Rita today from Career Center to say a bit about how to speak with employer. As I believe that this skill is really important for everyone to prepare for the studio. I think that's why we introduce you, uh, Miss Rita and Miss Lee today to help us to prepare really well to before the city I took the how to talk with employer, how to talk with the person that you haven't had chance to talk before to get the new connection and build the networking skills. Thank you, Mr. Thank, Thank, yeah. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So my name is Mita. My name is Liz. And we're going to be talking to you for the next uh, about hour or so, mm -hmm. I think, on how to make sure that you know how to speak to employers. So I'll be speaking for the first half and then Liz will be speaking for the second half. And we've got a couple of activities and things for you to do so you don't have to just sit and listen to us. So to get the most out of the session, make sure that you're all um, participating when you get the chance. And now you're okay. probably full of yummy food <laughs> and cakes. So hopefully the sugar will be getting to your brain now and you're, <laughs> you're getting more active. So, and hello to those of you who are online as well. Um, welcome. Hopefully you will be able to participate and get something out of this presentation as well. So, um, first of all, why do you think is it, it's important for you to learn how to speak to employers? Yes. Uh, it's actually, uh, you know, communicate with the employers that you are giving such a you are, uh, you are showcasing your talent, basically. The employers. Exactly, you're showcasing your talent. Um, there's a bit of an idea that IT people don't like to talk. I can see lots of people on their phones, <laughs> like your phone is or your laptop is surgically connected to you and that you'd, you'd rather not um, speak to human beings. Is that true? Yes. 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 <laughs> is it okay? Is it, is, can you get away with just showing, showcasing your things online. Can you do that? Yeah. Why not? Because it's, it's very important, like people are very important. So yeah, you can't like meet their life, you know, only being there in online. You have to make the people and connect with them. It's very important. You, you do. Progress, yeah. As much as it may be a little bit scary, <laughs> you do have to learn how to. And Jack, <laughs> Jack is my, um, he's the best student at um, learning how to talk about himself with other people. <laughs> so if you want any expert advice, Jack's your man. <laughs> Isn't that right, Jack? Yes. See, he doesn't speak to me. <laughs> um, what we need to do is we need to gain that confidence of learning how to speak to somebody. You, how many, what kind of work, what kind of companies do you think you'd like to work for? Put your hand up if you've got names of employers that you know who you'd like to work for. Who would you like to work for? Google. Who else? Nobody here wants a job? <laughs> yeah, who would you like to work for? Government, yeah? Who else? Shout some names out. Yes. Yeah, government job. Government job. Yes. Yes. CDU. CDU. Yes. <laughs> Excellent. Yes. Any others? Yes. I heard that. NEC. NEC. NEC? Yes. Mm -hmm. Good. Okay. So, I used to work for the government. I used to work for the NTG. Do you think I know people who might give you a job? Yes, I do. I work at CDU. Do you think I know people who could get you a job at yeah. CDU? Yes. Yes. I work with lots of employers. Tasfia, who you probably know, she has connections. Do you think she might know people who work for NEC? Yes. Do you think we, Tasfia and I and Liz, have any clue about IT? 
<laughs> no. <laughs> so what you need to do, what I'm trying to demonstrate to you is that we know people who can get you jobs possibly or can at least introduce you to them. You need to tell us what you do, it's exactly as the gentleman at the back said, you need to be able to speak to us, let us know what you do, what you can offer, so that we go, oh, actually, I know someone who can help you. If you can't communicate that to us, you've lost a lot of opportunities. Does that make sense? So this is why it's important that you need to be able to showcase what you can do. And I'm sure you're all very skilled, but you need to show it. I do want to recognise the Indigenous owners of the land on which we are meeting, the Larrakia land. So we're meeting on Larrakia land. And communication is a very important part of most cultures. You're all from different cultures. The way we communicate, the way we share knowledge is very important. And Indigenous people are very, very good at translating knowledge from one form to another. So we're standing on the land of people who know how to do it really well. So it's, it's within our, it's, we're standing on the land that, that shows us how to do it. So hopefully some of those good vibes are coming to you as well. They are coming to me. So we're going to be talking about what to say. So that's what I'll be covering. Liz will be talking about how to approach employers. And then we'll be practicing. You may be thinking, oh my God, I don't want to practice. What's the benefit of practicing? To gain more confidence, to get experience, and to make your mistakes in the room here. You will make mistakes. We all make mistakes. Make them here with each other, not when you're about to speak to Mr. Google or Mrs. NTG. See, this is why I'm not in IT. Everyone we meet has the potential to connect us to someone who might be able to help us with our job search. Therefore, we need to make it as easy as possible for them to remember us. The human brain responds to stories that produce emotions so that when someone asks us, what do you do? Instead of saying, I'm a student, we can respond with a narrative that is much more engaging. The trick is, instead of telling people what you actually do, being a student, Tell them what you want to do. A useful tool is the golden circle concept made famous by Simon Sinek. One, start with your why. Why do you do what you do? What is your purpose? Do the right track modules if you're not sure what your why is. Two, how you intend to achieve it. What are you doing to make it a reality? This could include your study. Three, what form that will take. An example would be, I want to help people with mobility issues to exercise more safely so they don't injure themselves. I'm researching ways that we can use technology to accurately track our movements as we exercise and get instant feedback if, for example, we're overstretching. I'd ultimately like to create an app so that anyone with a smartphone can use this no matter where they are. Now it's your turn to craft your pitch. What do you do? So that's a very quick video. That video was on the Careers um, Career Centre, the Virtual Career Centre, so you, you can always watch it as many times as you like. Um, so what we need to do, we're all individual. What you need to start doing is thinking about what your story is. What's your... If somebody said, what do you do? You would have an interesting story that I would go, oh, that's really cool and I would remember you. I may not remember your name, but I remember that you're the guy who likes doing whatever it is. So it's about finding that hook, that story, that reason to be remembered. So we're going to have a go at that process now. So I want you to have a think about why 
So this is the beginning of the story. Every story has a beginning, a once upon a time. I want you to think for a couple of minutes, why did you choose to do IT? So I'm going to give you two minutes to think about and write down if you want to. What made you choose to do IT? And it can't be because you want to get PR. <laughs> so have a think of another reason why you're choosing to do Anyone IT. Need paper, so I said, definitely. Anyone need paper? No? Yeah, if, if you need any paper, we are here to give you more. Huh? What did we do here? I've got a bit of a problem. Oh, I asked you. Um, yes. Why did you study that? Yeah. And I go. And then you, so you get down to the and what we get down to the why. So I okay. see so you. You're going to tell me a bit about yourself and you say whatever. I go, oh, you're studying IT. What do you, what, what do you like about IT? And then you keep doing that. What yeah. is it about that? Yeah. Yeah. All right. So we can we can become the tires. So we can tell me what we're going to do, and we can get it. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a bit of an activity to help you get a little bit more clearer about your why. What I might ask you to do is, I might ask you to just join that table for a moment, if that's okay. So you're going to be working in groups of twos and threes, so three there, three there, you can do yeah. twos and twos. Yeah. You can either do twos or threes, that's fine. So. So you're going to be asking each other, you're going to be taking it in turns. Okay. You're going to be taking it in turns to ask each other questions, almost like an interview, to get down to the real reason why you've chosen IT. Something that's true for you. It's going to be different for everybody. So um, Liz and I will do a bit of a, we'll show you how to do it. Um, and then we'd like you to have a go. Take it in turns in your twos and in your pairs and in your threes until you get to the R. There should be like an aha moment when you, when you realise, yeah, that's the, that's the reason. That's why. So let's let's see if we haven't practiced. We haven't as this as if we can find me to fly. Hi, Mita. Nice to see you today. Nice Thanks to for meet coming you, along. Thank you. Um, can you tell me a little bit about yourself? Well, I'm studying IT. You're studying IT. Yeah, yeah. That's, <laughs> that's, that's great. CDU. Doing oh, at CDU. That's yeah. fabulous. What made you choose CDU? Uh, <laughs> well, I live in Darwin, so okay. um, yeah, it's the only place that's going to do. Okay. And what year are you in? Um, I'm in my penultimate year. So okay, I'm so graduate getting, getting ready to look for jobs and things. Yeah. What do you think you want to do when you finish? Um, IT. <laughs> <laughs> Something okay. IT. Okay. Yeah. What is it about IT that you like? Um, well, I don't. I like. What do I like about IT? I like the fact that I can do it anywhere that I want mm -hmm. to. I can probably. IT is something that is 
um, everybody in the world needs IT. Everybody in the world needs that. That is yes. that is good. Is is there anything in any particular projects that you've done at university that's made you more interested in one part of IT, which is so big? Um, projects. Um, I don't really know enough about IT to answer. <laughs> <laughs> just say I did a project in I XYZ did, and I, did, I loved yes, that. Yes, I loved the project in programming. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so, what do you what do you think it is about programming that resonates with you? Why why did you enjoy that? Well, I enjoyed that because I think it's going to be the language of the future. Everybody's going to need to know that know how to do that. And how do you think studying IT is is going to help with that? Well, because one, what I'm interested in, I think it is the way of the future. And I mean, I, my, my niece, she's, you know, she's little and she already knows how to do certain, I mean, I don't know what she's doing. She's, it, children seem to pick it up naturally. And what I, what I would like is to see that, um, no, no one's left behind. You know, I think I think IT can um, close the gap between the people that have and the people that don't have. Mm -hmm. So I think I, it can be a it can be a way to yeah. I think you don't have to be rich to be able to do IT well. Mm. So I see it as a way of equality, really. I suppose. Bingo. There is Mika's why. Mika wants to work in programming so that she can help with other people learning programming, perhaps teaching, maybe, who knows. But it's because she believes that if everybody has the opportunity for some IT training, it will help close the gap. Okay, so there's Mika's why. She actually wants to help close the gap. And the way she's helping close the gap is by working in IT to do things, to help kids learn how to program and stuff like that. Yeah. So did you see that? We had to ask quite a few questions to get there because when you first start to think about this sort of stuff, it's not, it doesn't always come straight to your mind exactly what it is that you want to do and why you want to do it. But by if you talk to each other and you ask probing questions, so ask them questions that they have to tell you a bit more about the story. Why do you like this? And how do you think that will work? Those sorts of things. You, they will eventually come to their moment of why they're actually studying it. Yeah. Does that make sense to everybody? Yes, yeah? definitely. Yeah, it, you, you might, the person who's the interviewer, you might feel like you're a, a toddler. Why? Why? <laughs> why? But why do you like to do that? But why do you want to do that? That's that's how you're going to be. The interviewer is going to go, why? 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 And the person's going, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> but you have to think. And even sometimes when you're forced to think and say something, what's true for you comes out of your mouth and you go, oh, I didn't like that. <laughs> so we'll give you five minutes per person so can someone keep the time please yeah, sure. so take it in turns so get into your pairs or your trios and have a go we'll give you 15 minutes for the whole thing yeah, yeah. Five minutes now. ready steady go oh. and just stick your hands up if you think you need help and we can wander around because that's our why <laughs> <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
Okay, well done, everybody. Let's come back to the room. All right, I'd just like to maybe get some. Okay, everybody. So let's just come back to the room. I'd like to hear maybe from one from each table someone's why. So, any. If you don't volunteer, I will pick someone. So, just letting you know. Anyone volunteering on this table? Okay. Yes. Oh, excellent. What's your one? Well, basically, I just like thinking because I've experienced like on the 
the technology can help you for the solution to many of the problems in life. So I understand that knowing IT or technology will be helpful for any professional, whatever career. So that's why I chose IT degree. Anyway. So the question is, thank you very much for sharing that. Um, I'd like you to share why you're going to be an IT professional rather than why you chose to study IT. So, good answer. Let's see how we go this table here. Um, well, I I choose the IT profession because the yeah, IT is saying you don't have any limitations, right? You can do whatever you want to do, then you can create your own world with that, like metaphors and stuff like that. Okay, so you can create Anything. your own world. Yeah, so for example, if you are an engineer, you have power by the physical rule, right? You cannot build a house like above the air and stuff like that, but in IT, thing, you can do that. So what do you want? So the question, can you listen please, when people are speaking, um, it's, and this is, I'm not telling you off, but it's impolite to talk when someone is sharing. Because it's not, you know, we all know it's difficult to speak up and share. So please be courteous and listen when someone is, is sharing their story. So, and what we're learning is how to, and everyone, there's no, no one saying anything wrong. What I'm trying to do is teach you how to refine the answer. So the first answer was more about why you choose, chose to study IT. What I want to get to is why you are doing IT. This answer is, is okay too, but I don't really, I'm still not really getting a sense of, you can create your own world, you can do anything. I don't really know, I still don't really know what are you going to do. Oh, actually it's about a creativity thing. Creativity. Creativity, yeah. but I still, so, and this is, I, I get it, but what, as an employer, I want to be able to imagine what you're going to do. Creating your own world or creating worlds, unless you want to create video games or something, which is creating, which could be a thing, totally could be a thing, but I still don't really know what you're going to do for me. So keep thinking about it. We'll keep refining it. This table. Anyone here on this table? Solve your problems. Solve my problems. So what are my problems? <laughs> what problems am I going to solve? I have many problems. <laughs> How are you going to solve them? So, for example. Yes. It depends upon uh, what company I'll be working for. Yes. So what company would you like to? Work? Well, let's say. Tesla. Tesla, okay. Like everybody assumes uh, Tesla is an automobile maker. Yes. They are. Yes. But Tesla is more of a data company. Okay. Like every, for every mile a Tesla car drives, it collects data through yes. its sensors and its cameras. Okay. And it's sent back to Tesla servers. Yes. And they, that data is mine, it's refined. Yes. And they create a certain structure. Yes. Which then is used to train a machine learning algorithm. Ah which will power self-driving cars. Ah. So in this case, I can work as a data engineer. I can work, I can mine your data. I can put that data into a structure and feed it into an algorithm, which will, like which will apparently be a software, which yes. will apparently drive the cars you manufacture. Well, I will do what's in which will train, like, which will drive the cars that yes. Tesla is going to manufacture. Right. And when it comes out of, out of the factory, mm -hmm. I'm here working as a data engineer. Perfect. Trying to drive a car. So I, can you see how I can now imagine self-driving cars, and I can I can kind of get what you're going to be doing. So that's a very good example. Is that actually what you want to do? Yeah, that is one of your problems as a, as a. As Tesla, like yes. as the company, as the automobile company it is. Yeah. And I can solve you that problem as a data engineer because yes. I'm in IT. Perfect. Yeah. Excellent. Very good. I can imagine exactly what you're going to do for me. Is that what your IT project is going to be on that you're going to do for the code fair? 
not that intense. But <laughs> <laughs> you're not going to make self-driving cars. Not really. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah. Thank you. But any, anything like a teaser or maybe? Yeah, that's very good. Very good. So uh, the reason that I want to ID and I choose ID and I want to be an ID specialist is that because um, creating solutions and uh, solving real world problems is, is my thing. I really love I, I really love to solve real world problems and that will impact uh, millions of people. And uh, that is the reason that I want to be an ID specialist. And uh, in continuation to your story, uh, the the only example that I can think of is that. Uh, it's not uh, very much uh, suitable for Darwin, but it will be suitable for a Darwin assembly. So if you are just uh, doing the algorithms for your student data and you are doing for driving for driverless cars, right? But if you want parking, it's very hard to find in a city like Melbourne or Sydney. So what uh, what to address like problem like that is that uh, you create a you know a parking area. Uh, each parking spot having the sensor that uh, is there a, is it occupied or not. And all the data will be going to the server, and it will be in tune connected uh, to the Tesla server, and it will automatically project on the cars, uh, you know, kind of a screen that uh, uh, in sector three there's a parking available. So it's kind of a small solution to a small problem, but uh, it's really uh, important to solve this problem when you are in an urgency or you have something uh, very important to attend, and you cannot find a, a parking area. And, and, and it's, it can be a really nasty problem you know, sometimes. <laughs> So, so solving solving real world problem is what I think to be an ID specialist. Excellent. So I think the solving real world problems using technology people say that all the time. So I'm not saying don't say it, but it's it's kind of like everyone says that. The example is the thing that makes me interested because as an employer I'm going to speak to lots of people and everyone's going to say I'm going to use technology to solve real world and you know by the time I've heard it 20 times now but your specific example so you know I want to help people solve problems for example the thing that I'm working on at the moment is and you can talk about you know the time when you were in Melbourne and you couldn't find a parking spot so that made you think and I was late for a bit, or whatever, and I got the story. And I go, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to figure out a solution so that people can figure out where the, where the nearest problem spot is. Is it just going to be for people that test the cars? No, it can be. <laughs> it, could be so, it could be connected to a public server, or maybe it can be uh, into the inbuilt system of an Android system or an um, iOS system. It can be built in the it depends on how you are partnering with the organization. Good. So that kind of conversation is also good, you know, and then I'm thinking, okay, so you know, in my mind, like if I'm who am I? Am I this Darwin City Council or Melbourne City Council or am I you know the owner of the parking parking car parks or you know, who I you know, so it could work in many ways, so that's good. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, we have to go. Um, so, why I would like to be to that. Firstly, um, let, let's say in this past six years, I've been experiencing lots of like, working on different projects. I've been working on more than just five devices, projects, and which actually made me more passionate about it um, to have a very innovative society because we live in this arena that we want to have everything very quick, stand and automated. And this is one of my goals as well, to have my own form as a form automatic, fully automated, right? And what I have got to know during this, my, um, let's say, master's, is that I'm doing my thesis on IT threats. Not only it is making our life easier, but there are so many threats that we don't even know about it. And that is what I want to figure out as well. So on the way to creating an innovative society, there are some problems, there are some traits or weaknesses and commonalities that have to be addressed. And as a cybersecurity analyst, I would like to do that. So I would like to be part of So I have someone who just really can't understand this kind of stuff. Um, I can't picture what you're talking about. So tell me a story. Give me an example. Okay. For Let's example. say, for example, I've got connected my work cam with that TV, right? Yeah. And let's say some of the sensors are invalid. If I'm walking, motion sensor, the light turns on, light turns off, right? Um, for example, that's one. 
even the, during that time as well, the data traffic that has been traveling, we don't even know so many vulnerabilities will be present inside it. So let's say normal people, not everyone sells ID here, right? And not everyone will be aware about it. So my main aim is to make a very convenient society so that they don't have to worry about the weaknesses, which we did before. So what would be the threat? So there will be lots of vulnerabilities. Um, so give me, so give me an example of a threat that I'm not aware of. Mm -hmm. that you have to solve. For example, let's say, to make it very simplified, make it very yeah, simplified. to make it very <laughs> simplified, let's say a message. If I'm sending a message, like a random one, saying to click a link, and someone will just do that, they won't know it's a fake, or they won't know that it's a scam. But they will eventually do it, because they will think that, oh, I've got $250 voucher from Woolworths or something else, right? So uh, those sorts of vulnerabilities will be there as well like sending all the messages at once and making that system go down at once because of overflow. Yeah, so that's not true. <laughs> <laughs> sort of. But can I just say that the more you spoke about it, the more I saw the passion that yeah. you had for it. And you, when you first started to talk, your voice was very tiny. And then as you started to talk about something that you love, that we know nothing about, your voice became elevated, you sat taller, all those things are important as well. So even though we don't understand the technology, <laughs> um, we get that that's what you're passionate about. Yeah. yeah so basically, I'm passionate about IoT and I want to create a society. Excellent. It would be, you are and you are, I get it. It would be, and it's just a, we, we've only just started this process. So it's, it's, you're going to be refining it, refining it, refining it, and testing it, and testing it, so that when you go to the IT code fair, you've got something and someone, you know, you will be presenting to IT professionals, you won't be speaking to people like what you're talking about, but you will be, but then there will also be people like me who you want to, make understand what they're talking about. So that then I can go, oh, that's what she's doing. I know someone who can help. At the moment, I'm still not 100% understanding. I'm not sure. But just, it's just about refining. You're, you're very close, very, very close. This table. Okay. <laughs> yep. So, uh, I can, this is like, I used to be a bank. Yes. Banker. And um, my law school was in financial planning place yes. where we worked with like anti money laundry. Okay. And so we actually saved the, the total financial system from terrorist financing, scams, money laundry, uh, arms dealing, all that. So, from my user end, I used to say that what uh, it is only data with which we work because you sort out like, okay, this ship was uh, ship patched uh, Iran. Crimea or uh, Russia, so there is there can be some problem because there are sanctions. So probably it won't be good. We have to do a little bit more of checking, and there are sanctions which we need to do or something. So from that, what I realized that I'm only working from the users, not from the you know, back end. So there are like huge amount of data around us. It's uh, the thing is that we need to sort it out in a way so we can conclude something out of it that okay, this is the answer this is because of this. Like there are patterns that we can realize from the data and you can analyze it and solve it. So for, from that uh, you know, motive, I am reaching to my knowledge from for information system and data science. That would be my major. So yeah, from that book, I actually go. But you actually said something else to me when you were talking about it earlier, that you wanted to help the people at the user end, so the people that you, in the jobs that you used to do. Yes, like uh, for me, the point is that I, I used to be in the user side, you know. Mm. I used to be the person who used to be the user, you know, and somebody else used to do that, all the data sorting mm. and everything. Now I want to be in that part where I'm actually working with all the data. I'm like using my knowledge of risk and all. I can sort it if I'm better now. I, I now know that, okay, this things will work for them. So yeah, from that.
So, so when you're talking to an employer, you'll be talking to the user. So you'll be talking to. So you you can't make. So this is why I've chosen to sell you this. What I want to know is what they say. What are you going to do? Okay, but I can offer. What are you gonna? Yeah, you are going. To, how are you going to make my life easy? Because you've already done the patterns and sorting. Mm -hmm. You've identified where the risk is. Mm -hmm. Is that? Uh, yeah, from the user's point, now yeah. I'm, I'm, I want to be the person who is actually sorting the yes. data. And, yes. the and I think you were talking about improving, were you talking about improving the systems behind the scene so that the yes. end user has so a better be experience? More, yes, more uh, efficient for the users. Yeah. And what does efficient look like? Efficient will look like that now you can do it with less time. Okay. Now you can do it more, more like, you know, will be like more correct now good. you know mm. you will, like there will be less errors okay so that's that's what i want to know okay, mm. is that because of what you're doing whatever the thing is that you magic that you're doing in the background it will be quicker more accurate and easier mm -hmm. for people to track the legal financial mm -hmm. activities yes is that yes so that's good <laughs> excellent very good. So hopefully you're getting an idea that the what the why is not why you've chosen to study the degree, but why what you're going to be doing will make the world a better place. Now the next step, so you you have once upon a time, this is why. How are you doing it? So I'm just going to give you a short bit of time, two minutes to Provide the evidence. How are you doing it? So part of it might be the IT code fair project that you're going to be doing. I'm not quite sure how that works. So what skills, what programs, what projects have you done or are going to do that are going to support you to achieve your why? Ready, steady, go. Two minutes. This can be including what you're studying at the moment, projects, skills. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, I need to get this next one. I'm going to that's my little help. Did you make me look thin? <laughs> <laughs> No. You're on action. You're on action. You need to be 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 on action. Delete that one. No. <laughs> 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 um, they want the whole thing kind of wrapped up by the Okay, let's go. Yeah, then. Okay. <laughs> Networking. For many of us, the idea of talking to strangers fills us with horror. So why bother to network? Why don't we just apply for jobs on the internet? Because over 70%. Okay, girl. 
Uh, the available job. I need... That's different to the one you, you showed at the beginning. Isn't yeah. That advertised on the internet. Sorry. <laughs> Still playing. Back to the previous slide. No, it's still there. You see where there's that? Is there one at this end? No. What if I take this off? Most jobs go through word of mouth because it. <laughs> there should be a way of pausing it, shouldn't it? It's a cheaper, more efficient, and a more viable. Once the train's in motion, it cannot be stopped. Clearly, you can't stop the bus. Way for employee. <laughs> Is to find the right person. That's all right, just well sort it. Okay, if they have time. Yeah. Done. Okay, everybody. Eyes back to the front, please. I'm loving the conversations and the energy that's in the room. That's really great. You're obviously doing lots of talking about this, so that's excellent. Um, so did everybody have some projects and skills and things that they were working on now that could help them get to where they want to go? Hands? Anyone? Not even your study here at CDU. Extracurricular activities, Australian Computer Society, Student Association, building your own websites. Yeah? Okay. So there are some things that you're doing, um, but you need to consider that. If you've got sort of a bit of an idea about what you want to be doing at the end, don't wait to the end of your study to go, all right, well, now I need to do the next bit. It's too late then. You've got to be doing it now. Okay, so start thinking about that. Okay, so now we're going to move on to the actual practice bit. And I've got a little video to show you, but Mita started it and now we can't go back. <laughs> so if someone could show us how to go back to the beginning, that would be really good. Oh, okay. If you don't know network, you're potentially limiting yourself to a fact. Can you just go back a slide? No, because it's remembering where it is in the video. Let me try. Good solution, though. How many IT students does it take to <laughs> yeah. run okay. okay. video? <laughs> okay, share full screen now. now. Okay, but... Is it going to open the video? Yeah, is it this done now? Okay, push play. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Well Networking. For many of us, the yeah. idea of talking to strangers fills us with horror. So why bother to network? Why don't we just apply for jobs on the internet? Because over 70% of available jobs are never advertised on the internet. Most jobs go through word of mouth because it's a cheaper, more efficient, and a more reliable way for employers to find the right person. If you don't network, you're potentially limiting yourself to a fraction of all available positions. Put simply, the more people we know, the more opportunities we hear about. And networking is a great way to meet more people. Networking can come in a variety of different situations outside the usual meetings and functions. Your hairdresser, neighbour, or the person who makes your coffee every day can potentially have useful contacts for you. Let's break networking down into three key points. Firstly, let us start by changing how we feel about networking. Many of us feel nervous, awkward or fake because we feel like we must pretend to be nice to someone when really the only reason we're talking to them is because we want a job. Let's set the record straight. Networking is not asking strangers for a job. Having an open-minded approach of a casual chat will make you and them feel far more comfortable. Shift your mindset from what can I get out of this person to how can I help this person? It doesn't have to be in a professional sense. 
It could be recommending a good restaurant or sharing a recipe, or even just listening to their story. Secondly, many of us worry about what to say. Thankfully, people generally like to talk about themselves, especially more senior people. So the secret to networking is to ask people about themselves. Ask questions about their career story, their opinions and their advice. If you show genuine interest in someone, the conversation will flow easily. The third point is to know how to talk about yourself so that people remember who you are and what you have to offer. The human brain remembers stories, so create a compelling narrative that contains relevant experiences as well something unique or unusual so that people remember you. Prepare the story in advance and don't worry, it'll become more natural the more you tell it. Making personal business cards that have your name and contact details on them will also give you the professional edge. In summary, you don't have to try and be someone you are not, just be yourself, be curious about the person you are talking to, think about how you can make their day a little better, be ready to share your story, and you'll be surprised what opportunities will come your way. Okay, so that video is also in the Career Centre if you need to go back to it. Now, I know we want to get on to actually having some practice, so um, I'll zip through these couple of slides pretty quickly. So, to, to be able to feel more confident in social situations, you have to think about how you approach others and also how you are, how approachable you are. So, you have to soften, be like soft kitty, yeah? All right, so soften actually stands for remember to smile, open your posture, so stand tall. Um, see how they're slightly leaning towards each other? That's hard to do when you're standing, but you know, when you're sitting, you can do that. Um, shake hands, make eye contact, and nod when the other person's talking. So you're actually listen, you know, acknowledging that you are listening to them. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah. All right, so which person would you rather approach? The second one, yeah. See, they're smiling, they're making eye contact, they're open, they're shaking hands. First person, totally closed. Yeah. So, remember to be brave. Remember your body language. Introduce yourself, make sure you're shaking hands. Um, tell them about yourself and ask about them. Yeah, that's the way a conversation goes. It's not just one person doing all the talking. It's a two-way street. And talk about something that you both have in common, and that might be IT. It might be a very specific part of IT. It might be that you just went to the noodle house on Saturday night and had a great noodle something, yeah? So find something that you have in common to talk to, talk to them about. Okay, so now it's your turn, okay? So we're gonna have a bit of a networking here in the room. I'm hoping that you don't all know each other. Do you all know each other? No. No, okay. So what I want you to do is to be able, is to approach somebody that you don't know. Um, tell them a bit about yourself. Say, hi, who are, who are you? What are you currently doing now? What you think you'd like to do? Tell them your why. Help them refine, they can help you refine the why. And then ask some questions of that person as well. So. What sort of questions could you ask them? What made you interested in studying IT? Yeah, or if you're talking to an employer, what else could you ask? So what's the dream job? I mean, what's the dream job that you want to do especially when you're a student? When you're a student, yeah. You might ask um, if they've had any, you might ask the students if they've had any experience before in IT. Have you ever worked in IT before? Particularly if you're doing masters or something, you might have already done some work in IT. Are you working on a project? Are you working on a project? Your expectations. Anything else? How's your day be? Did anyone see that big storm last night? That thunder and lightning? Yeah. So these are little conversation starters. Yeah. You might also ask them about their career if, when you're talking to an employer. You know, can you tell me how you got to um, to work in this company? What do you like about doing it? Try and find out what their why is. Everybody good? Yes. You know what you're doing? Yeah. Okay. All right. So 
Um, this is a standing up networking event. So everyone's going to stand up, find someone you don't know, and introduce yourself. Just soften that little bit so that the other people have got room to come in and enjoy the conversation. Yes. Yeah? That makes sense. But yes. I, other than that, I'm seeing lots of nodding and lots of eye contact and everything, so that's really, that's really great. Okay, back to it. <laughs> 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 That's what I do. 
making connections and and I can see sort of partnerships possibly collaborations being formed that is exactly how networking works so very very happy with you all yep well done well done um, anyone got any questions any final comments complaints excellent so every opportunity you have to practice that don't just walk away out of this classroom and never do it again until the IT code bear appears in the year. Okay? Every time you are with somebody new, you're practicing. So, Tasfia, so. when is ACS coming to campus? 16. Who's going to that? Wednesday. On Wednesday, Wednesday. hands on everybody. <laughs> Who's going? I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah. <laughs> Tasfia, do you want to just do a quick look? <laughs> Can I ask, can I request everyone to like video Kenya's interface? Of course, sure. Don't follow it. So on Wednesday the 16th, is it? 16th from 12 p.m. Part of 12. Uh, it's a barbecue lunch. 
uh, arranged by Engineers of Australia and ACS. Yeah. So uh, you will be able to meet with the employers. Yeah. And also know more about what ACS is supposed to yeah. do for yeah. us. Yeah. So that's great. So everybody, um, if you're free at 12 o'clock, you should go along to that. Yes. It's an opportunity to practice exactly what you're doing here. Yeah. There'll be other people there, maybe, maybe not, maybe the same people. But practice telling people who you are and what you are going to do to make the world a better place. Exactly. Okay, pizza is calling. So everyone, um, please, I'll hand back to Shireen if they but. I think you're going to eat pizza, basically. <laughs> <laughs> and also keep practicing your networking. So that's a whole new ball game, is practicing talking when you've got maybe a drink and food in your hand as well. So think about how you're going to juggle those things when you're talking to someone. Yeah, so continue while you're eating your pizza, continue to practice networking. <laughs> yeah. See how you can talk and eat at the same time. Well, that's it for us. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank, Thank you. you. Everybody, let's do okay. Thank you very much, Nita and Liz. Um, I hope you guys know where Career Center is. Yes. 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 Neighbors. Yeah. 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 That's right there. Okay. That's where we can reach them. And um, also today, I would like to thank our CDU Code Fair ambassadors. You will see them wearing those white shirts. Here we go. And this is um, Rosie. This is Kim. This is Kenny and Piyush. Okay, and of course we're looking for three more. That's why we are looking for your application. Okay, so if you have any questions when you see them on campus, grab them, ask them more information about this. I would also like to emphasize that the winners of each category is in Business Innovation Challenge, all the challenges, all the competitions are going to be attending the NT Digital Excellence Award at the Parliament House. Ooh. Okay, and then you will you have a chance to be selected as an overall entrant, um, overall outstanding entrant for CDU IT Code Fair. And most likely, um, when the winners always get a chance to work in NTG and Ooh. many other companies as well. Yeah, so um, I really need you to do that priority, Big Rock first. Big Rock is one of the CDU IT Code Fair. Yeah. yeah? Um, project okay another thing is head to facebook or linkedin like us and career center as well like us and then look up competitions and challenges that you want to join like i said focus strategy we don't want to spread, spend all your energies on everything but something that you're good at and is your passion and your future and then i just would like to add a little bit about networking even because from what i've seen is i see a lot of Students go like that. They go together, maybe on a bus or something to an event, and then they stick together. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I want. I don't want to say that. I was like, okay, we just arrived. We will see you again in one hour. Then you go off to do your own things. Because when you're with your friends, you might be shy in saying something or speaking. That so separate <laughs> from your friends. Get out from your comfort zone. And don't spend too long with one person because sometimes I think um, earlier we just talked to them about problem saying no. Mm. <laughs> yeah. So um, please always say no if you can't make it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then um, at the end of the semester one, we're going to do the, for the first um, mini code fair. So you're going to showcase the project that you have done this semester. We will invite alumni to come back and then act as a judge. So that you get that rehearsal going on with the feedback and all that, and then look out for more soft skill workshops from at the career center. Yeah. Okay. Right. Because we want to before before we go off and then practicing networking.